I'm going to bring him on, the man himself, David Icke. Hello, Nick. Okay. Welcome to the show, David. Uh, it's such a great honour and pleasure to have you join us, and I hope you're well. I'm, I'm good. Uh, funny enough, you talk about unforeseen circumstances. Um, I went to see a clairvoyant once, and uh, right. I went to see a clairvoyant once, and when I got there, there was a note on the door. It said, closed due to unforeseen circumstances, so, um, <laughs> so I do know what you mean. Yeah, do you know what? Sometimes, you know, there are things that are even out of our control. I have sometimes a poorly day, I'll wake up, I'm really poor, and I have to say to my clients, I'm having to shift your, your appointment to another day because of unforeseen circumstances. It's just the way it is. So, David, do you know, just before we came on air, you were telling us a, a really interesting piece of info about your upcoming show and your tour, uh, which is the name is the same as your book, isn't it? Everything you need to know but never been told. Is that correct? Yeah, that's the one. But it's the everything, about, everything you need to know tour, yeah. And and by everything yeah. you need to know, I don't mean every last syllable and dotted I and cross T you need to know. I mean what people need to know to um, see the world from a completely uh, different angle. Because from that, everything else comes. Because we go through this uh, programming uh, system that we call uh, human life, actually. It goes through... Uh, from, from the womb through the education system, the programming system, it goes through peer pressure, goes through the media, um, it, it goes through um, receiving the same minute perception of possibility all your life. And so that gives you, a, it gives you an angle at which to look at the world. Um, and it's, a, it's such a narrow angle, it's, it's almost what well, it is laughable. So, um, what I'm doing in the books um, in, in, in great detail and what I'm doing in the talks with Connecting Dots is, is, is saying, hey, you, can, you actually can look at all this crap from another angle. And when you do, the very same things that you look at now look very different, especially when you connect them together. Absolutely. And do you know what I, what I noticed? I've, I've been reading this over the last couple of days, about a week or so, and I find myself reading something and there's something that you mention in there which then leads me to go to the index to look something else up so it's it's not for me personally it's not a book where i can read from back to front or front to back it's one that i'm going to flip through and pick out bits because it's so intriguing and it leads from one thing to the next so it does leave you with more questions um and it leaves you with uh, an open mouth sometimes i have to admit because it's like there was a time i was talking to my wife about it. i was like really is that is that is that really yeah i've just opened a page and there's a title on there of lord of the rings yeah so yeah you know this is what this type of i'm just talking to the listeners here this is what this book is it's an amazing book david i have to congratulate you on this okay um not only is it vast the index is vast as well um but the information that you've put in there is it's just it's I want to say the word madness, but in a in a polite way, because it is there is some fantastic bits in there, really fantastic bits. Well, the thing is that that you can you can read the book um, uh, with individual dots, because um, yeah. you know I cover many many subjects, but Dude. but all, all all the dots connect. It's when you connect that you see the world differently. See the media, well to an extent anyway, the mainstream media is telling people what is happening but it ain't telling them why it's happening. There's no context, and it's in the context that true understanding of what is happening um, is, is there to be seen. And so um, you'll read a newspaper, and you'll see a story on page three, you'll see a story on page seven, a story on page eight or nine, um, and they'll be about different subjects, and they will be reported in and on of themselves in isolation. But you then connect those stories together through through the information that I, I put in the books and the talks, and suddenly um, they, they look very different to the way they've been reported in isolation. And it's this context, this connection between things and people and events that, um, that people really need to know, because uh, one of the key things is um, knowing what the outcome is designed to be, because there is a plan for the world that's been unfolding for... Uh, enormous amounts of what we call time. Orwell tapped into it. Aldous Huxley tapped into it. That's why they've been so incredibly accurate in, in, in the things that they were talking about and predicting. Um, and if, um, if you uh, uh, can uh, uh, get deep enough into it, and I've been researching it now for nearly 30 years, to the point where you know what the outcome is designed to be, then daily events are what? 
they are the stepping stones to that outcome. And, and once you know where, where they want to go, you can see the process day by day by day of them going there. So something happens uh, and it's just a random event um, if you don't know the outcome. But if you know the outcome, the desired outcome, it's not a random event. It's another stepping stone towards it. Um, and uh, once, once you get this in your, in your, in your mind... Um, where they want to take us and why and how the techniques that are used of, of manipulating perception so that we will go with it, um, then the world becomes an open book like it never was before. Uh, yeah. Do, do you know, um, do you think then that um, when you mention like the media or t TV programs, films, etc., do you think they are... Um, there are some programs and films out there that I've always believed that are giving us a message or warning or things that either that are coming or, or already are here. Um, but, or do you think they are, uh, in a way, telling us to be careful or um, this is how life's going to be, get used to it? Well, the, uh, there's, <laughs> there's, there's two, 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 two ways to look at that, and both are true. Um, you will get um, people in the... Um, the movie industry, um, in the media industry, um, who do know some of what the game is and some of what the outcome is desired to be, to be. And they will seek to put that in front of people in a way that's not too overt, not, not, not that says, like I do, this is what is planned, this is why this is happening, but, but gives you a... Uh, a push to open your mind to the to, to possibilities because obviously when they're working in the mainstream like that they're constantly uh, aware of the fact that they if they cross certain lines then then that's their career finished so that's one aspect of it but the the great majority of the movies that come out of Hollywood um, and Hollywood is is a it's a cesspit I've been writing this for years and years and years about the uh, pedophilia, child abuse, and satanic rings that control Hollywood, and thanks to the Weinstein story and and, and uh, others, we, we've we've seen a glimpse, and it is only a glimpse of that that um, that putrid world that uh, underpins Hollywood. And um, you see, the world that we're being taken into is so dramatically different to the one that we've experienced, especially people uh, 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 in my generation, I'm coming up to 66. I know I don't look at Nick, you don't have to say it. Um, <laughs> but um, um, I, when I was brought up into the, in the 50s, for instance, as a kid, that, uh, uh, the 1950s, the world was completely different to what it is now. That's given me a radar to see the, the scale of the change that's taken place. Um, and when you're being pushed into a, a world that's dramatically different to that, even dramatically different increasingly through technology and AI to the one that younger people have been used to up to this point, then you've got a problem of resistance where people go, hold on a second, what is going on? Because the world is so different, you get uneasy with it. Why? I, I don't like this. What is happening? I, I, it's, it's, this is all incredible. Um, so what you're trying to do uh, through movies is um, something that goes on to the name of preemptive programming. You are putting in front of people, not just in movies, but in television too, um, a visual expression of the world you're taking people into. This is why these dystopian movies um, uh, with, with machines uh, ruling and, and robots and, and alien yeah. machines... Um, uh, they're coming out one after the other and have been year after year after year after year. Um, and, and what they're doing is that they're getting, well, the conscious mind too, but particularly the subconscious mind, familiar with that world. So that as it comes in for real, there's not the same... Um, uh, resistance in the sense that it doesn't seem quite as far out and different as it would have done without the movie. So they, they are being used to prepare people to accept the world um, and get used and familiar to the world that, um, that they want to take us into. Because as I say in the books, familiarity is 
one of the greatest forms of human control, one of the greatest forms of human perception manipulation. Because once something becomes familiar, it becomes a gimme. So you look yeah. at the education system, right? Um, people might have debates about how children are taught. I, I rarely see debates about what children are taught. Um, and true. Yeah, this, true. Uh, because and, 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 and debates about whether children should go through an education system at all in the form that it is now, which is a programming uh, uh, operation, a perceptual programming operation for the masses. Um, and because um, children coming out of the womb, three, four years at home with mum and dad and then into the school system is so familiar to people, what's well, is the way things are, mate? It becomes a gimme. And once it becomes a gimme, it's not questioned. And this is the power of familiarity to absorb people into things that should seriously be questioned, not just the education system, but um, are not because they just become familiar. Well, this is how, how it is, mate. And this preemptive programming is, is another expression of that. It's, it's getting people familiar with a world that we're going being taken into so people don't think that it's so alien, if you like, um, as it would be if, if it was just coming cold without this preparation. Okay, so I've, I've got a couple of questions here, okay? Um, there's one that's been posted in our live chat room. So uh, Scott would like to say or ask, so what's the outcome? What is the outcome to all of this? Oh, well, um, uh, let, me get, let, me, let me give you the outcome. Um, <laughs> we um, are in our, in our prime eternal state. We are consciousness, um, a, a state of being aware. We are awareness. And this awareness... Um, has experiences of different worlds, different realms. In fact, what they really are are different bands of frequency. And so um, what we call the human body um, locks our awareness into a tiny band of frequency uh, in, in visual terms called visible light, which is so narrow, it's unbelievable. People think they look out of their eyes and they see uh, everything there is to see in the world in the, the world and the the space they're looking at. They're, they are seeing a, a, a ludicrously small fraction of it. Um, and all the rest is invisible to them, even though it it's, um, exists in, uh, ultimately in, uh, in infinitely. Yeah. And this whole um, control of um, humanity is actually the control of attention um, and the control of perception. And if you look at the way... Um, the system works, what we call human society. It's all focused on the five senses. Can I see it, touch it, taste it, hear it, uh, that way it exists then. And the idea is to focus that attention so, um, so powerfully that that's all people are aware of. They're not aware of the, 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 the greater self, the greater infinite self. And when people have what are called near-death experiences, and if you, you read the millions of accounts that are available now, um, they talk invariably about when they leave the body. What is leaving the body? Their awareness, their state of being aware. And as it leaves the body, it is no longer focused through the body on this narrow band of frequencies, and therefore its, its reality dramatically transforms and expands. This is why uh, they talk about being able to, to see past, present and future in the same moment, the same now when they leave the body, where they can experience multiple realities in the same moment, in the same, quote, time. Um, and and um, you, from that perspective, see a dramatically different reality to the one you see in the body. So what the body has been become and has been manipulated to be is a trap for our awareness so we focus on a very narrow band of frequency and what we do then nick is we give this focus this point of attention labels we call them david ike we uh, we, we we give them races we give them life stories we we give them uh, occupations we give them income brackets we give them colors and cultures and we um, tell uh, the people that these labels are who you are. 
when they're only what you are experiencing, not who you are. There's a massive difference between the two. Now, where we're being taken, because it's all about entrapping awareness in a, in a narrow band of frequency, that's what the prison is, that's what the matrix is. Um, we're being, up to this point, that has been done by programming perception from cradle to grave. You, you, you look at the um, a, a, a human life uh, from, from cradle to grave and th the amount of um, information that it will receive um, that is outside the box is absolutely fractional. It's, it's a download. It's what I call the postage stamp consensus. And um, if you step off the postage stamp and say, actually, I, 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 I'm going to explore other areas and I'm going to come to different conclusions about things, then you're jumped upon. You're called crazy. Uh, you're ridiculed or, or dangerous, or in my case, all of them. Um, uh, but at least up to this point, the control of perception has been through the control of information received, because that's how we, we, we form our perceptions. It might be uh, information from experiences we have. It might be information we get from the nine o'clock news. But we form our perceptions from from our um, the information received, and our perceptions then dictate our life. What we will um, uh, challenge, what we'll support, what we'll do, what we won't do. All these things come from our perceptions of situations and reality in general. Where we're being taken, and this has always been the end game is to the next stage of perceptual control. And that is to um, connect the human mind brain to artificial intelligence, which the Silicon Valley mad people, crazies in Silicon Valley, what I call in the book, um, the devil's playground, very accurately, I assure you, um, they are um, now openly talking about this. And the point is that once you reach the point, this is where all the smartphones uh, that you hold and the tablets leading to, to technology on the body, leading to technology in the body, which is where this is all going quite blatantly now. Um, it's to uh, attach the human brain and the human perceptual processes to AI so that the... Um, Human perception is no longer being manipulated by the control of information. AI becomes human perception. There is no need to program it and, yeah. um, and um, give it a perceptual uh, 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 um, way of looking at everything because AI is then that perceptual way of looking at, at everything. At that point, human human. Uh, awareness, human consciousness, human thought, human emotion, human perception is over. It's finished. Kaput. And this is why, although they, they, they don't see the bigger picture, they only see one level of it, um, this is why people like Stephen Hawking and, and other scientists have said, you know, this AI could be the end of humanity if we go down this road. Well, the next stage of understanding is that's the idea, and it's been the idea all along. And that's what this whole transhumanist uh, madhouse is all about. So I've always believed back in the what, mid mid nineties. Um, you're talking about um, a bit of mind control here, I suppose, because to me the games console uh, craze went mad. They, they, they're focusing on the younger people, um, and they feed them information through the games console, be it violence or whatever it is they're doing. Um, but then they've they've hyped it up, and we now have this VR, so you can put your phone on whatever it is. I don't understand it all myself, but you, phone, you put these goggles on these phones. Do you think it's all the same pattern? So well, it's it, 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 it. yes, it's all the same pattern because um, you see, let's just look at it. Uh, let's go back to what I said earlier. Yeah. When, when you know the desired outcome, you can see you can see the steps. What I call the totalitarian tiptoe towards that outcome. Uh, Love that. Right. Yeah. So so let's look at the outcome here. Um, in this uh, sense, um, the outcome is to connect the human mind and perceptual processes to AI. So AI becomes those processes. And what we're seeing, therefore, is, uh, and, and I, uh, this is the word I use in the book, an assimilation of humanity into AI, into AI control and into AI perception. And this is the reason, uh, um, just to give one example, that we have, well, I don't, uh, but, but so many people now have, 
Um, these office assistants produced by Amazon and Apple and all these things. I mean, you know, the, um, the office assistant Siri, for instance, I think Apple uh, bring that one out, but the, 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 the technology they're all based on was seed funded by um, DARPA, the technological development arm of the Pentagon, which is the true owner of Silicon Valley. Um, and so um, when you start now having people interacting, having conversations with um, AI, oh, you know, play me a record, do this, what am I doing today? This is all about um, uh, this assimilation, not just literal assimilation, but perceptual uh, assimilation of the human mind into um, AI. And uh, wherever you look, AI is taking over. You, 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 people sit in their car and they've got AI telling them where to go on the sat nav. You know, everywhere you go, this, this interaction um, between humans and AI is getting more and more extreme, and it's it's the it's the assimilation, preparing for the the, the time and the Google executive um, and um, PR man for Frankenstein, um, uh, Kurzweil Ray Kurzweil, the so-called futurist, um, is is predicting that the uh, the human uh, brain and um, AI or what he calls the cloud will start to be connected um, as a matter of course by as early as 2030. Um, and um, all around us now, the um, infrastructure for this control system is, is in your face if you will connect the dots. For example, um, years ago in the books, I talked about the coming plan for something that was called the Internet of Things, um, where everything is connected to the Internet. Now, that has come to pass quite clearly. It's happening in front of our eyes. But there's another level of this, which they call the Internet of Everything. And that's where the human mind is also connected to the Internet. Um, and and um, so all this smart technology, well, that's why everything is called smart, this smart technology and these smart processes, as they call them, are all designed to be part of one smart grid to which the human mind and all everything right down to your fridge are um, connected. And so um, people like Elon Musk, who on one uh, level says AI could be the end of humanity, but then in an extraordinary contradiction is um, uh, running a company called Neuralink, uh, which is about connecting the human brain to AI, and his um, SpaceX company is leading the way in putting satellites in orbit to, um, to bathe the entire Earth in Wi-Fi, which is exactly what is required by this um, uh, technological control grid from which no one on the earth is um, planned to be able to escape. Now, for this to happen, and I, I've got a, a story actually very local to me, um, very, very local to me, um, that's just come up, but over what I'm about to say, but um, for this to, 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 to be able to happen on the level and with the power that they want it, they have to have at least this 5G level of power, Wi-Fi power and, and um, uh, communication power. And uh, so what we're seeing now is this 5G um, level of communication, which is a higher frequency, a much higher frequency, and therefore much more destructive to the human uh, 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 health and to human DNA being uh, played out in California and across America now with, and they admit this, the authorities, without any independent testing uh, of the consequences uh, on, on, on people before it's played out. Now, I'm sitting here now on the Isle of Wight in uh, the little town of Ryde. Um, the ludicrous Isle of Wight Council has um, just voted to be um, the first or one of the first guinea pig areas in Britain to have 5G. Uh, wow. So it can be tested. Wow. 
now on, on the population not tested to say oh this is terrible we're not going we're going to get rid of it but tested in a way that they can observe its effect on the population in terms of the effect they want it to be and because this um, 5G um, is a, a different frequency to what we've had before, it doesn't, um, it doesn't travel very far. And it doesn't travel through solid objects very well. And therefore, as they're saying, there have, there's going to have to be boxes um, ed on, 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 on towers or lamp standards, etc. Every, every few houses... To, 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 to smack this out and I, I find it interesting too that we we're having a, a number of stories starting to emerge about um, uh, trees being cut down in, in, in cities I mean you came across that story a few weeks ago in Sheffield where they, they announced they were going to chop down these uh, massive mature trees in uh, in urban streets in Sheffield well of course a, a um, a street of mature trees is a nightmare for um, 5G. And the reason that they are um, doing this on the Isle of Wight, or planning to, we're going to do all we can to, to, uh, to, to highlight it to people so it can be stopped, is because they like islands when they are observing the effect on a target population as part of their, um, their studies, if you like, because we're laboratory yeah. rats to them. Because yep. island populations tend to be more stable. They don't come and go as much. And so they are much better for observing the population and seeing its effect over a period. Um, so it all fits why they want to do it on the Isle of Wight. Um, so, um, you know, where, where do they want to take us? Where, where they are taking us, unless we wake up to it, taking us to a point where there is no human that, that human thinking, and, and people like Kurzweil are saying this, and, and, and that, 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 that their sales pitch is by being connected to AI, we will become superhuman. We won't. We'll become subhuman. That's the idea. We'll become just computer terminals on, on this um, technological um, uh, uh, internet and, and uh, smart um, grid and web. Um, and uh, so what we're seeing is, is it happening. And, you know, you can see the entrapment, Nick. First of all, you get people, um, especially the young, because they're going to be the adults when this really plays out. That's why the young are being so targeted. Um, yep. First of all, you get them addicted to technology they hold, well achieved. Then you Absolutely. then you get them um, uh, th then you get them to accept um, uh, technology on the body. The Google Glass, the the, the Bluetooth, the, uh, the the Apple Watch, etc., and these patches they have on the skin now, and then yeah. you move them, and it's already happening. You move them to um, technology in the body, and that's that's the the frontier that they've been aiming to uh, to achieve all along. And once that happens, and AI starts to do human thinking, well, there will be no longer any uh, human thinking. Well, one of the questions we've been posting in the, in the chat room is that um, it's exactly about what you're talking about, um, technology in the body or on the body. Um, and it says here, um, everyone will have, you know, when will everybody have computer nanobots in the body um, so we can walk and talk about without having a handheld device? And how, how far away or how soon do you think this will be taking place? I well, think that's something that you, you're already talking about. So. Well, very, 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 well, very quickly, and there's another, there's another aspect of this, you see, which I go into in the book in, in some detail. Um, you know, pe people talk about microchips and microchipping the population. I've been writing and talking about this for, for nearly 30 years, uh, almost now, um, uh, long before um, it, it, it became reality. And people say, microchips, that's crazy, man. Well, it ain't, is it? Like, I mean, when you look at it now, is it? No, well, actually, it's not. No, no, exactly. Um but, but microchips, what microchips? See, we, um, we perceive microchips as, as these um, rice-sized chips that go under the skin, and they do exist, and they are being used. I was in um, talking in Sweden last year, and uh, a guy came to the talk. Why he came to the talk, I don't know. And he said to me afterwards, I've been chipped. I thought, you've what? Oh, and and, oh. and he's, he, he, they're chipping people in, um, in Sweden, and they're having parties to, 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 to celebrate the fact that somebody new has been chipped. This is the madness of it. Um, and I, I, said to, I said to the guy, what are you coming to a talk of mine for? If, you, if, you, if, you, if you're going to be chipped. Anyway, um, where I'm going with this is that's one level of it. 
The real control, chipping control, is actually nanotechnology. Um, and um, it's what it goes under various names, neural dust, and, and, and the, the, one of the ones that's most used now, appropriately, is smart dust. And you actually breathe that in. And uh, this smart dust, and I'm quoting um, the, uh, the, the manufacturer's own um, promotions here, this smart dust um, in the body has the ability to communicate to all other smart um, uh, devices and smart technology and smart chips to the point where um, the lift can open um, uh, and you walk in uh, going to work and, and the lift will um, read your uh, chip and know who you are, your, your uh, nano chips and know who you are and will open the, the, uh, the lift at the right floor. When you get to the desk, your computer will be turned on because it turned on the moment you walked in the building because it picked you up and realized you were coming to work. Um, and these are these um, um, AI-controlled smart cities that they are now not only talking about but beginning to build. Um, and uh, Kurzweil um, says that... Um, the time is coming when this smart dust will infuse all matter. It will infuse all the, the natural world. It, it will be everywhere. It will infuse the trees, plants, the soil, everything. Um, and so you then ask, well, how on earth are they going to do that? Well, the only way they can do that is is from the sky and that's what is coming down in chemtrails among many other things nanotechnology um, and and this stuff's being found by researchers now in in the so-called natural environment so you see th this is the thing what 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 we are um, presented with is a vast number of diversions so that we're looking uh, over there when it's happening, the real stuff is happening here. So if you take the example of America, you've now, because of the, uh, the bringing to power of Trump, and, and, and I, I would absolutely say that was, that was planned, uh, you've got this um, uh, polarity between pro and anti-Trumps, and that's the focus. You've got the so-called progressive mentality, if only it was, um, uh, opposing Trump, and you've got the Trump uh, uh, supporters opposing them, and that's the focus. What's Trump doing? What's he tweeted? And then over on the other side of America in Silicon Valley, or through Silicon Valley, um, controlled from the Pentagon and other places, um, is this, um, this technologically controlled AI reality unfolding by the day, largely compared with uh, what's Trump um tweeted today largely ignored and under the radar and that's what i'm trying to put right